Hey everyone, welcome to our For You Fitness podcast. And on this episode today, our focus is carbs. Uh, if you are tuning in live on Facebook, thank you so much. And I will get to your questions at the end of the segment. Um, so many of you, including myself, are constantly inquiring about carbs. How much should you eat? What kind should you eat? What are the good kind? What are the bad kind? What can I have on my training days? And when is the best time to eat carbs? This, car, this carb topic is just so extensive and it just, I'm gonna try to shine some light on how much you might need when it may be more appropriate for you to eat them, meaning the timing of the day, and my top picks for complex carbs. But first, let us define a carb. So, all carbs except for fiber eventually become sugar. Let me repeat that. All carbs except for fiber will eventually become sugar. This includes fruit. Yes, although fruit is all natural, it will be processed, processed as sugar. Once you consume that piece of fruit, your body no longer cares whether it's a healthy banana or a bag of Skittles. Both will eventually process as sugar and jack up your insulin. It breaks my heart knowing that so many of you out there, including myself, think that you know having fruit all day and every day is actually healthy for you. Uh, quite the contrary. Um, I digress. So some carbs process slower and some carbs process faster. And for our sake, the slower the better because these slower guys will have less of an impact on your insulin, which is a good thing. Keep in mind that all carbs, there's a different kind of impact for each kind. So the ones we should try to aim for are more so on the whole and less processed side. Uh, the more processed the food item is, you know, case in point, let's say a box of mini wheats or a box of Cheez-Its. Yes, they're delicious, but these box items will have little to no fiber. And we want fiber in our foods because it slows down the blood sugar response. Not only that, but fiber also feeds the good gut bacteria, which is critical for weight loss and fat loss for feeling fuller for longer periods of time, and it also helps with detoxification. So fiber is a must when choosing carbs, especially if you are a fruit lover. Not all fruit is created equal. Keep that in mind. Now, how much we eat will depend on several factors. This includes your metabolism, your genetics, your glucose intolerance, your insulin health, your training regimen, your fitness level, your exercise intensity, the time of day, your stress levels, your hormones, and your personal goals. So as you can, as you can tell, it's not going to be black or white. I know, I'm raining on your parade, but I'm just throwing out some truth. Um, you have to eat intuitively and really, really pay attention to the way your body responds so that you can find the perfect balance for you. Because what you need is totally different than what your best friend needs, or what your training partner needs, or even what your husband may need. So, in order to better identify how to handle carbs and what kind of impact they have on you, then you're going to want to think about uh, a follow, the following scenarios. Number one, how difficult do you find it is for you to lose fat right around your midsection, meaning that stubborn belly fat? And number two, are you a snacker? Meaning, are you, you, you can't go longer than two to three hours before you crash and burn. If you're raising your hand and if you're falling into one of these two categories, this could likely mean that your body is relying on sugar as a form of fuel, AKA you are a sugar burner. And we do not want to be a sugar burner. Why? Because we want to burn fat for fuel. We want to be a fat burner, not a sugar burner, but a fat burner. So other questions to ask yourself, how is your energy throughout the day? 
Do you tend to get sleepy after a big lunch or do you experience some brain fog after you eat a carb heavy meal? What are your daily stress levels like? Because you may actually need more carbs in the evening to help reduce the effects of stress because the carbs may actually help you sleep better. Are you pre-diabetic or does diabetes run in your family? If so, you're better off going low carb. Uh, also, are you an athlete that trains hard and more frequently than the average Joe? If so, then yeah, you probably need a few more carbs than the average Joe. My point is, you've got to pay attention to how your body responds to carbs. Be aware. Also, some key symptoms to be mindful of if you are over consuming carbs are bloating, gas, indigestion, an increase in your appetite. If you are hungry constantly, that's a factor, okay? Uh, unstable energy throughout the day, and also, of course, the inability to lose weight and belly fat. If you're nodding your head like, yeah, that's me, then guess what? You've got to start documenting what you are eating. Yes, I said it, that's right, I mean journaling. How are you supposed to identify the culprit of, of weight gain or the reason why you can't lose fat if you can't remember what you just had to eat the day before? Guys, by journaling, you will have so many aha moments similar to maybe like this. Wow, I have a major headache this morning and maybe it's because I'm paying for those chips and salsa that I had last night or something like, oh, I'm so sleepy after I eat that, that sub sandwich from Lenny's, man, I'm tired. Or even noticing the number on the scale gradually, gradually, gradually go up because you can't stop picking at that little leftover uh, piece of chocolate birthday cake that's just taunting you in the fridge. Oh, you know who you are. You're thinking and hoping that that one little piece ain't gonna do a thing. That every night that you take that piece, it's not going to affect you. On the contrary, it's gonna creep up on you. And side note, the body can take up to three days to process the food. So you step on that scale three days later and see what happens. Anyways, so whether it's using MyFitnessPal or a basic journal or spiral notebook, tracking your carbs will also give you a better idea of when your body actually needs them. Remember, we can survive off of a minimal amount of carbs, why? because we've got enough fat to keep us going. That's right, yes we do. So, going back to the quantity, the method that we use at For You Fitness, um, and you may have heard this or seen this, it's an old school method, is we measure our carbs with our fists, okay? For example, my fist would be equivalent to maybe about a cup of uh, cooked oats, or even a cup of baby carrots, or even maybe a medium sweet potato. Now, remember the number of carbs that you need will depend on your genetics, your insulin health, your workout intensity, your insulin response, and much, much more. You truly need to go by what your gut is telling you, not what a magazine is telling you, nay, nay. So, as a general recommendation, we tell our female clients that on their training days, their heavy workout days, they can have anywhere between one and three fists for the entire day, not per meal. I'll give you an example of what a full training day might look like for somebody who works out, let's say earlier in the morning. First meal, which would be post-workout meal for somebody, maybe something like a protein smoothie for convenience purposes. So this smoothie would include maybe a scoop of plant-based protein powder, a quarter cup of old-fashioned oats, there's the fist, um, a serving of spinach, maybe a handful of spinach, and a tablespoon of almond butter, all blended with some almond milk, and bam, you've got meal one. Meal two, a palm full of lean protein, like chicken or shrimp, uh, a fist of sweet potatoes, and maybe some handfuls of broccoli topped with a little bit of olive oil. Boom, meal two, check. Uh, meal three, 
a palm full of, let's say, wild Alaskan salmon, a fist of shredded Brussels sprouts, shredded Brussels sprouts, tongue twister there, one of my favorites, um, and even a handful of sauteed mushrooms or artichokes. Boom, meal three, check. Now, we keep these ranges, these carb ranges, pretty modest because if you notice in my meal examples, we like to encourage at least two to three balanced meals, meaning those carbs should be consumed alongside a plentiful amount of vegetables and a healthy source of protein um, to slow down the impact of the carbs and to keep your insulin steady throughout the day and just to keep you going with full amounts of energy. But keep in mind, again, these quantities are all individual based. What you need is different from your next door neighbor. So that's an example training day. Now for a rest day, and these are the days that we designate for low impact activities like walking or cycling, yoga, uh, we're going to swap your carbs, your fist carbs, for more vegetables and more healthy fats. And by doing this, you're getting in your fiber and your insulin, again, is remaining stable. So you won't feel like you're starving because you'll be full from good fats and good veggies. And this little timing method is what we dub as carb cycling. Yes, higher carbs on your training days and lower carbs on your rest days. Again, let me emphasize, the number of carbs that you need is not cut and dry. But if you are on a fat loss journey or a weight loss journey, then this is where carb cycling has its benefits. So to keep this very elementary, on the days that you hit the weights, you train hard, these are gonna be designated as your higher carb days. Think of these days as your fight for your fist day because you have to earn those carbs. Now, one of the things that happens during an intense workout is that muscle glycogen stores become depleted. So to capitalize on this moment, you can help restore them efficiently by eating complex carbs post-workout. I personally encourage my clients to consume their desired complex carbs post-workout for multiple reasons, including carbs are going to increase your anabolism, which is muscle building. The carbs are going to be beneficial for recovery and for energy. And not to mention, by adding the carbs in more so on your training days, we're going to be preventing some major plateaus. So many times we have clients come in and they, they tell us these horror stories of them trying to commit to these crazy low carb crash diets while they're training their asses off, while they're working out in the gym six to seven days during the week. The problem with this scenario is that your body will hit a wall. It will plateau. And these plateaus happen for several reasons. Number one, you are likely under eating on your training days. Number two, you are likely overeating on your days of rest because again, you didn't properly refeed on your training day. And number three, by, restrict, by restricting your carb and your calorie intake for extended periods of time, your body will go into a protection mode and it will start storing every ounce of food that you put in your body as fat, which of course, leads to weight gain and fat gain. And that is the complete opposite of what we want to achieve. So again, carb cycling on your training days can have some major benefits long term. So to kind of wrap up this mini carb topic, I'm gonna run over a small list of my preferred complex carbs that I have dubbed as the six is seven. And um, these guys are gonna be recommended more so on your training days but you are not limited to just your training days given that they are complex carbs. So grab a notepad or just listen up. All right, number one, sweet potatoes or yams. These babes are nutrient powerhouses and can easily take the place of bread or buns or toast in recipes. They're so easy to make. I've got a few recipes, some sweet potato bacon sliders. I just posted my sweet potato barbecue nachos. Hey, you can't go wrong with those babes. Uh, number two, Japanese purple potatoes. Say what? <laughs> 
If you have never heard of or seen these purple potatoes, they are great for tricking people who don't like sweet potatoes because they actually look like white potatoes when you open them up and they aren't as sweet. Uh, I find these regularly at Whole Foods, but you can probably find them at a local fresh market or uh, farmer's market. Uh, I have used these in the past on Thanksgiving and it masks the healthiness of a sweet potato because it's actually white. It's awesome. Uh, try tricking, tricking your kids or your husband with that one. Number three, gluten-free old-fashioned oats. Not the oats that you find come already pre-packaged, you know those little packs full of brown sugar, cane sugar, dried fruit, syrup this, this and that, chocolate, coconut, whatever, you, whatever it is. I'm talking about the old-fashioned oats that are made up of one ingredient, meaning old-fashioned oats. Yes, plain and dry. My number four, chickpeas, aka garbanzo beans. I honestly never knew about these guys until, mm, I don't know, a few months ago, no. About a year ago, I got introduced to these. I knew I was eating them through hummus, but I had no idea what other things you could do with them. For instance, they're easy salad toppers for getting an extra fiber and good complex carbs. And of course, going back to the hummus thing, I just posted a recipe on a, a, a classic just hummus, few ingredients, no fuss. I know everyone that I talk to, they enjoy a little hummus from time to time. So one of my favorite uh, complex carbs there. Number five, quinoa. Yes, how do you spell it? How do you pronounce it? It's quinoa. Um, I know a lot of people who have actually tried to make it and absolutely hate it. You know who you are uh, because it's really bland and it's got a kind of funny but funny texture. So here's a tip. It cooks a lot like rice, okay? So you're going to boil, uh, whether it's water or I would recommend a chicken broth or a bone broth, low sodium. Then you're going to add your favorite spices like garlic, onion, oregano, um, etc. And then once it's cooked, of course, you'll drain it. And then from there, add a, a, a juice of a fresh lemon a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, holy flavor town, that will change the flavor of that quinoa. Again, it'll take on the flavor of anything that you season with it, so don't be afraid to add a little, a little something, something to it, okay? Uh, my number six, the squash family. Oh dear, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, butternut squash, winter squash, there's so many types of squash, and especially now that it's seasonal, Oh my gosh, um, I love me some spaghetti squash on my pasta nights because I can eat a butt ton of spaghetti squash, still maintain low carbs, get some decent amount of fiber in, and be full and happy. And it's got a good, it's got a good flavor to it too. So try using that as a supplement for spaghetti or noodles. It is quite a wonderful treat. And my number seven, any starchy vegetables like Brussels sprouts, carrots, or onions. These guys are a nightly staple for me because I can quickly saute them uh, in a skillet with a little bit of, let's say, avocado oil or a little bit of clarified butter, which is your ghee, or even some small pieces of diced bacon. Oh man, you are changing the flavor of those vegetables, especially that's important for those of you who don't like those vegetables, but it's all healthy. Good healthy fats, good healthy starchy vegetables. It's a win-win, so try it. So those are my top seven, and I, again, have recipes for pretty much all of them except for the Japanese sweet potatoes, but those are easily, easily, uh, you can try that same type of sweet potato recipe with a Japanese sweet potato. Uh, and again, I've chosen this particular list of complex carbs because they contain more natural fiber and will process slower in the body, so you're fuller for longer. And if you're paying attention, you probably noticed that fruit was not on that list. Yep, if I eat fruit, I'm eating it as a treat. 
and not as a regular staple food item. If I eat fruit, it's never going to be in the morning. Why? Because I'm going to spike my insulin that much higher. If I'm going to eat fruit, it's going to be post-workout when I've earned it. So fruit is a whole other topic in itself, but know that the body will not understand the difference between a piece of fruit and a bag of Skittles. Nay, nay, it will not understand. So don't worry if you're thinking, you know, what the heck is a complex carb? What's a simple carb? Well, what kinds of fruits? I will definitely have another podcast for that topic. Again, this carb topic is ginormous. So to wrap this up, I have a few take home messages for you today. Okay. Number one, you must listen to your body and pay attention to what it is telling you. Okay. Number two, Try cycling in your carbs on your training days and back off on your rest days and see what happens. You know, you earn your fists, earn your carbs, fight for them. Number three, try incorporating, you know, one of the many of the sexy seven that I listed above um, as a complex carb into your post-workout meal. Try that out for size. And lastly, for my fruit lovers, I know there are a ton of them out there. Number one, track how much you're eating. Really, like write it down. Write it down. Number two, actually going back to number one, you want to track because if you're eating five plus kinds of fruits in one day, nay, nay, you will never see fat loss. That weight is barely going to drop. So that's why you want to track. Number two, Maybe start tapering your intake, you know, so if you've got, you normally eat five a day, taper down to three. Try that first, and then try consuming them just on your training days when you have earned them. Got it? Treat them as a treat. Just try. So, that's it for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed this carb episode. I will have many more because, again, big subject. And remember... Take some action and apply just one of these recommendations. You guys have a great day. Thanks for having me. Bye now. Okay, so we're going to get to any Facebook questions. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Boo Boo, any questions? Nope. Nope. Okay. Thanks for joining, guys. Peace out.